Uh, hey YouTube, alright, so today is Thursday, uh, it's like the 3rd, I think, August 3rd, maybe the 4th, but, alright, so yeah, today's Thursday, so I've got the engine back out, got it all unwrapped, you've seen the day before yesterday, I tore the other engine apart, it's back here, and nobody's hit me up yet, so, if, like I said, if any of y'all want this, it's free, you can just have it. Like I said, it's not nothing fancy. There's no crank. There's no pistons or rods. It's literally just a block with the timing cover and the oil pan. And the oil pan's junk. But yeah, y'all seen I got that engine completely torn apart. I got the oil pan off of it with the gasket. I got the heat shield. I got the exhaust gaskets, which are actually out of the shed. But so I've got the rest of the stuff I need to get this thing put together. I need to get that oil pan on here, so I need to clean up the bottom side of all this, so I can get RTV on all this, and go ahead and get that pan and gasket plopped on here. Before I do that, I need to pull the oil pickup tube and clean up the gasket surface so I can get a new gasket in there, because like I said, I don't want to have any issues with this thing. And We'll go from there and as soon as i get the oil pan on that should pretty much be it and then i can get some oil in this thing i need to get a new filter because i don't have a filter at all i still need to uh unbolt this and get the new gasket in there as well and i need to swap out the sensor so got a little bit of stuff i gotta get done but it's coming together it looks like an engine so i'm gonna get right to it and start getting everything cleaned up and get this oil pan on here so y'all stay tuned and i'll give you guys another update all right guys so i'm working on this engine i've already got the rear uh the knock sensor heat shield the one i painted red i got it installed i pulled the supercharger off it's just sitting right there i just bolted on the starter because it was just two bolts um and I was about to start cleaning up this oil pan and I noticed this timing cover gasket sticking down a little bit. And it did the same thing on the engine that's in the 07 now. So what I had to do is I had to take a razor blade and you just have to trim it to where it's nice and flush with the bottom of the block and the bottom of the timing cover right there. So you gotta trim both sides, make it nice and smooth. And then that way when you put the oil pan gasket on, there's not a bump in it right there. Or if you don't clean that up, it's going to leak. So that's what I'm about to do. I just want to give you guys a little tip on that. So if any of y'all are doing the double roller and using that extra thick gasket, it doesn't always line up perfect. So you just got to trim it. They might make it like that on purpose just so no matter what engine it goes on, you can just trim it up and it fits and you shouldn't have any leaks. So... That's my update for now. So I'm going to get these cleaned up, get this bottom or rear section cleaned up, and get all this uh, cleaned off. I still got to pull this pickup tube and uh, get this thing together. So y'all stay tuned, and I'll give you guys another update here in a few. All right, you guys. So I got the old oil pickup tube off, and there was a lot of gunk and shit on there, and it looked like it's pretty gunked up inside. So I had another one in the parts car that I'd already taken off of another engine and I had already cleaned it up. Uh, all the gasket mating surface was already nice and clean. So I just took the uh, brake clean and I just sprayed it through the top end and let it all come out. And then I sprayed the shit out of the end and then I sprayed it through again just to get all the, the old oil and gunk and shit out of there. So it's all nice and clean. And got the uh, had to use two different razor blades to get the uh, old gasket off of the bottom of the block, but got it off. So I was able to get my other new gasket. There's the one, and then I had another one from the Felpro one. So I got the Felpro one on there. It's all nice and tight. I just snugged it down with the uh, eight millimeter. So now that's done so now i can grab the oil pan and the gasket which is up there and i can go ahead and get the oil pan on here i'm probably going to put some rtv on the bottom all the way around just for the extra sealant just to be 100 percent sure it's not going to leak 
And then once I get that on, then I can focus on this oil filter housing and swapping that sensor and getting that new Felpro gasket in there. And then she should pretty much be like 90% complete. 85% complete and then I still got to find supercharger bolts So I'm probably gonna have to go this weekend out to the salvage yard and see if I can find some bolts off of It's probably gonna be an L67 But as long as, as long as there's supercharger bolts they're the same thread between L67 and L32 so Have to go get the bolts then I can get the blower bolted on and start getting all the uh, Accessory brackets the alternator bracket and the alternator and all all that stuff cool elbows so making lots of progress so uh, I'm gonna keep working on this thing and get this oil pan on here and then I'll give you guys another update all right you guys well I've got the oil pan on and so what I did was I got the oil pickup tube on and then I put the gasket on and that RTV decide that goes from the gasket to the bottom of the block and then the other side looked perfectly fine and plus I ran out of RTV so I wasn't trying to use the, the water gasket maker. It's just for like your water system, coolant system. So I didn't put any between the pan but whenever I put the pan on I hit that piece on the pickup tube and broke it off of the, I guess this is the low oil sensor. So, now I've got to get another one of those. So, that's okay. So, whenever I go to the salvage yard for the supercharger bolts, I'll just grab another one of those too. And hopefully, I don't break it as well. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's coming along. So, now oil pan is on. So, now I need to I can pull the sensor off. And I need to pull this whole oil filter housing off. Just unbolt it and then uh, get this thing all cleaned up and get it back together with the uh, new gasket and that'll be one less thing I've got to worry about one less thing complete so she's coming along though it's only been like four days since I started putting this thing together I I started on Monday so not bad I'm pretty happy with the progress so I guess uh, y'all stay tuned and I'll give you guys another update once I make some more progress on her so all right you guys so I've got the old oil filter housing is up there and then this is the one off the other timing cover and it was already all nice and cleaned up as well so I just got this side all cleaned up and there's the new Felpro gasket. So now all I gotta do is just stick this back on there, get the bolts in, and torque it down. Oil filter housing's good, and it's already got an oil filter on it. So don't even have to worry about getting an oil filter right now. So I'm gonna get this put back together, and that's pretty much all I can really do for today, because like I said, I don't have the supercharger bolts, so I can't put the supercharger on. And... I think there's still a few other things I've got to do. Oh yeah, I've got to get that new sensor. Because I broke that one. Which sucks. And put some oil in it. But I can't even put the oil in until I get that sensor. So, it is what it is. I've made some progress today. I'm happy with it. So, I'm going to get this uh, oil filter housing on here. And then I'll give you guys another update. Alright y'all. So, made a little more progress. Got the uh, brand new... Uh, gasket, Felpro gasket on the oil filter housing and this is the other sensor that I had so this should be a good sensor hopefully <clears throat> so that's pretty awesome it's definitely coming together it's come a long way in a few days so I'm going to go out to the salvage this weekend I'm going to get the supercharger bolts and another Another one. I don't even know what to call this. The oil level sensor. It just it's the it's low like the low oil. Light, uh, it tells you low oil. Yeah. So I guess oil level sensor. I'll, maybe I'll look it up on AutoZone and see just how much they are. 
I always just, call it the Might just go light. buy it. <laughs> Brand new. But I'm definitely going to have to go to the salvage yard to get the supercharger bolts because AutoZone and O'Reilly's never carries any. They don't even carry the gasket, so why the hell would they carry the bolts? <clears throat> I did find out their torque could yield. The supercharger bolt? Yep. Hmm. Did not know that. He sells a kit for the upper and lower, but it's like $120. Well, I just need the upper. The lowers are already on. They're already torqued. I've never had any problems reusing those. I couldn't find any online. I was going to suggest didn't know Ace Hardware, ARP, but I bet you'll get like, some comments against that. ARP didn't even have any. So, but either way, I've made a lot of progress. It's coming along. So, y'all stay tuned, and I'll give you guys another update. All right, you guys. So... I got the engine all right back up. I just got the supercharger set on there. I bolted the fuel rail on. There's no uh, injectors in it or anything. I had to take the pulley off and the other pulley on the idler down here so I can get those on the uh, 07 here in the next few days. And But yeah, I just kind of got everything sealed up. There's still the hole in the oil pan. I did order a brand new sensor on eBay so it should be here in the next few days. So I'm just waiting for that to come in and then I've got to swap the the pulleys around on the 07 and put the 80 pound injectors in so I could take the 42 and a half and get those in this engine for the Grand Am and then I still either got to buy some new headers or get the headers off of the 97 because those were supposed to be for the Grand Am but the 97 the exhaust just broke and I needed something to because I was driving it, so I just kind of stole them. So, I'm either going to have to tear apart the 97, which was the whole reason why I built this engine, instead of tearing that one out, so we didn't have to tear that one apart right now. But, I don't know, it really just depends on how everything goes, and if I can even find another set of headers or not, but I'm trying to make some progress for the Grand Dam, so I just want to give you guys another update. I got everything picked up and put back in the 06, all the tools, and got this all wrapped up and stuck back over here to the side. So, I think that's going to be it for tonight. So, y'all stay tuned, and I'll give you guys another update here in the next couple days. Hey, YouTube. So, back out here in Inola. It is the next weekend. So, we got a lot of stuff done last weekend. We were able to get the radiator all plumbed up. I had to put in an uh, adapter in right here so we could connect these two hoses. But now that's connected. We were able to get a clutch fan on there. It's not the uh, original one for the Land Rover, but it's the LS one. And it's just a smaller one, so now it doesn't hit the baffle. So that's on there. Uh, a lot of the wiring's done. We got the fuel line ran from the rail over here. Runs around the back side of the intake. And down over here. So, I mean, there's really not a whole lot left. Uh, they are going to have to do a custom AC line to get rid of this big-ass kink. But, other than that, everything's looking pretty damn good so I know there's just a few other little things they're still waiting on another piece of the harness which I'm not sure if it came in I think he said it was gonna come in on Tuesday or Wednesday this last week so I guess we'll have to see if the harness came in and but yeah I mean it's it's super close so I just want to give you guys another update uh, today my buddy uh, David's been out here. He's been doing suspension, doing a lift kit on it. Looks like he's got the rear done. Now he's got the fronts. Yeah. So, not super high, just like a three or four inch lift. But, it's looking great. So, I'll keep you guys updated. I'll give you guys another update before I leave today. So, y'all stay tuned. All right, you guys, so we've been working on this thing. We've already got the passenger side done. You see? 
Everything's all in there, looking good. So we've got the driver's side disassembled. And these uh, plates were, were kind of nasty and rusty, so I cleaned them up with the wire wheel and the owner decided to hit them with some paint. So we're just waiting for paint to dry. And then we can go ahead and get this new spring in here and get the new shock in, get everything bolted down and get this thing going back together. So, so that's pretty much all we've got done. Was David had the rear done by the time I got here and we've just getting the front lift kit on. So, still waiting about the harness. I haven't heard anything about the harness. So, and then he's gonna have to have a custom AC line made for this. I guess it's still charged right now because this was factory Land Rover compressor. So, AC system is still charged. Yeah, this is kind of in the way, but it slides right down in there. We'll get that together. And we'll have this thing done. So, now stay tuned. I'll give you guys another update once we start getting this thing put back together. Alright, y'all. So, we got her all back together. Everything's tight. Looking good. Awesome. So, now it's just wiring. There we go, we got the wheel back on. Okay, I guess Sitting right. nice and yeah. tall. She's looking good. Alright y'all, so I've been working on the 07 a little bit. I got the 3-0 pulley put back on. And swapped out that uh, idler pulley to the bigger one. It's like identical size to the 3-4 and this. 3-0 is identical size to the original pulley. As you can tell the size difference of these two. And with the 3 is about the size of this, and that tensioner is about the size of this, so went right back on with the same belt. The belt has plenty of tension. So seems to run a little bit better. So I guess we'll see on the uh, drive home how much better she drives. Well, I mean, she, we can still drive it open header. And then we've got the lift kit done on all four corners. So now the only thing left is wiring. Sitting good. And then he did get the harness. And this is the original harness back, but it's been modified. So to plug into the LS swap harness. So everything's pretty much just plug and play, but uh, David and the owner decided that uh, they wanted to call it quits for the day. So I guess we're gonna come back. Well, David's probably gonna come back tomorrow and work on it some more. And she should be running soon, so. Y'all stay tuned and I'll give you guys another update whenever I make it back to the house. Don't mind the donut. New tire will be here tomorrow. And yeah, one of my new bulbs is going out. I have to put another headlight in there. She's running good on the 3 0 pulley with the AM85 comp. AC is blowing ice cold. Of course, my tire light's on because I got a donut. As an update so we're pretty much done with the Land Rover for tonight so I don't know if we're gonna come back out here tomorrow or not David's planning on coming back out here on Monday with the owner so I don't know I might might be here tomorrow I might not but uh I think that's gonna be it for now so I'll hit you guys up give you guys another update whenever I make it back to the house all right guys well we are sitting on the side of the highway because we was cruising back to the house, running about 70. 
And all of a sudden, it just shut off. So I coasted over onto the shoulder. The shield just cranks and cranks and no start. So, man, I, I don't know, I don't know. So we're just chilling. I'm going to let the car cool down a little bit and hopefully she'll start up. So I'll give you guys another update. All right, guys. So it's been about 30 minutes. We're still sitting here. Uh, I got a hold of my buddy Ray from the storage and he came and got some money and he has a five gallon gas can. So he's going to fill up the, the gas can and he's going to bring me five gallons of 91 and I'm going to put some 91 in here. And hopefully that's enough to make her fire up. He brought me like a gallon of 87, but it still just cranks no stars. So hopefully it's just a fueling issue and it's just the E85. Fingers crossed. Hopefully. So once he gets back, I'll get this 91 in here and I'll give you guys another update. All right, you guys. So. After adding the five gallons of 91 and sitting there and trying to start it like 10 or 15 times after the last update, she finally did start up. And so I just drove straight to Quick Trip and filled it up. She only took like two gallons. And so whenever I put that five gallons of gas in out of the gas can, it went from just under half a tank all the way up to full. And then I had to like just barely squeeze two gallons in there and right at at two gallons It was like right up at the very top of the fill neck So it's she's completely full so It definitely was still about half a tank of a e85 So I went ahead and just topped it off and filled up that five gallon gas can again with 91 so as I drive and use some gas, I can just fill it up with that 91 out of the gas can. And Ray just let me borrow it. And so I guess I'm just going to have to hold off on the E85 until I get her tuned for it. I just figured with having all the E85 pump and the E85 line and everything. And I just put some in there and she was been running great for the last three or four days. So I figured all was good, but I guess she did not like that. So... The 90, 91 worked, so we're over here at David's with the, the 97. Yeah. Man, I missed this car. Fires right up. Does some excellent burnouts. This is a, a good car. I'm really glad I hooked up, hooked David up with it. And then... So I got uh, on eBay and I found another set of the exact same headers and downpipe that's on here. And so I just went ahead and bought them and David is going to reimburse me. So that way we don't have to pull the headers off of here. He just wants to buy a set. And so I found a set that's the exact same and has the flared end on the, the rear uh, header where the crossover pipe connects into the rear header. And a lot of the ones on eBay aren't flared right there. And this one has the flare and an extra mounting bracket. They're identical to the ones that are on here now. So I went ahead and ordered those up. And he's just going to pay me back for them. So those are on the way. That's for the Grand Am engine. And then once I get those headers on, I can get, get the engine over to uh, the Grand Am storage. And get the engine bolted up to the trans and I need to pull the, the engine off the stand with the cherry picker and get that flywheel bolted on there but I need to find out if I need to get a pilot bearing or not because I'm not for sure nobody's mentioned a pilot bearing out of everyone doing the swap so I just need to see if I need to get a pilot bearing or not and if I don't, then I can go ahead and just slap it together, make sure everything's good to go, and kind of go from there. So, uh, yeah, I guess uh, I'll give you guys another update on that tomorrow in the daylight once I'm over at the house. I just want to let you guys know I'm not broke down on the side of the highway anymore. So, thankfully, it was just the fuel. But, alright y'all, y'all have a good night, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow.